ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, Annalise Garrison, and today we're going to talk about when to pick pain as an answer choice on the NCLEX. I'd like to invite those of you listening to put any of your pain comments down below. Uh, if you have any questions about opioids or your own pain that you're going through, please put that in the comments below and I'd be happy to uh, answer those comments for you. Thanks. All right, let's get started. Pain is a funny thing when it comes to the NCLEX because in nursing school and when we study for our state boards, we always want to pick the answer that has to do with pain because we want the person to not have pain. They came to us to get well. But for your state boards, pain is not necessarily the answer because pain is a psychosocial need that comes after physiological needs. Now, what do I mean by that? What are physiological needs? Physiological needs is what the nurse does for the client and is measurable. You have a blood pressure of 160 over 90. You know it's 160 over 90 because you took the blood pressure with a blood pressure cuff. Temp, 101.5. You know the temp is 101.5 because you took the temperature with a the thermometer. So physiological needs are measurable. Psychosocial needs, which is what pain is, is a psychosocial need and psychosocial needs are not measurable. You have to rely on the individual to tell you the level of the pain on a scale of 0 to 10. You have to rely on something they said. It's not measurable. So physiological needs are measurable. Psychosocial needs are not measurable of which pain is a psychosocial need that always gets picked for on your state boards after physiological needs. For the NCLEX, 30% of the time pain will be the answer. 70% of the time pain will not be the answer. But there are four times that pain is picked as an answer on the NCLEX. And that is, if there's more pain after a medical intervention than before, if in the answer choice you see a level and a scale, if the client is mentioning pain and another adverse symptom, and like I just said, after physiological needs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through each one of these and give you an example. So let's read this question. The nurse has received a change of shift report on the following client. The nurse should first assess the client, A, with sickle cell crisis, who has a hemoglobin of 9 gr grams per deciliter, B, with pneumonia, who has an oral temp of 101.8, C, who had a femoral phlebitis graft bypass surgery and is reporting slightly more pain than before the surgery, or D, diabetes type 1 who is reporting pain in the legs. Well, with sickle cell crisis who has a hemoglobin of 9 grams per deciliter, we know he has a hemoglobin of that level because we took his lab work. So that's a physiological need. But there's nothing wrong with that answer because people who are in sickle cell crisis do have a hemoglobin between 8 and 10. 
And the question is asking us, the nurse should first assess. So there's nothing wrong with A. There's nothing wrong with B because the person has pneumonia and a temp of 101.8. So that is a symptom of the disease. Don't pick it. So now we have two pain answers. C says who had a femoral phlebitis graft bypass surgery and is reporting slightly more pain than before the surgery. And D is a person with diabetes type 1 who's reporting pain in the legs. It wouldn't be D because he didn't give a level and a scale. That pain is too vague. Right? But look at C. Who had a femoral phlebitis graft bypass surgery and is reporting more pain than before the surgery. There should never be more pain after a medical intervention. Therefore, the answer is C. Very good. Let's try another one. The nurse is assessing a client with heart failure who is receiving prescribed IV dopamine. Which of the following statements by the client would be a priority to follow up? Dopamine is given for low blood pressure. But even if you didn't know that, look at the answers. My IV site is painful. That is the answer. All right. Even if you didn't know that dopamine increases the heart, well, it increases the blood pressure. If your blood pressure is increased, your heart rate will be increased. Dopamine can heart meds do cause a headache sometimes, and I have urinated twice in four hours. Well, that's because the blood bus the blood vessels are vasodilating, but. There should never be more pain after a medical intervention than before. Did he put his IV in? Did this client put their own IV in? No. Why is it painful? I don't know. Let me go check. A painful IV could be a sign of what? Infiltration, phlebitis, right? There should never be more pain after a medical intervention than before. Very good. Okay, looking at this question, we read, The nurses received the following information about assigned clients. The nurse should first assess the client with ulcerative colitis who is reporting having bloody diarrhea, with lung cancer who is reporting expiratory rust-colored sputum, who had percutaneous transluminal angioplasty four hours ago and is reporting flank pain, or D who had a partial thyroidectomy three hours ago and is reporting incisional pain at a level of six on a scale of zero to ten. In this particular question, D is the answer because there is a level and a scale. But let me explain how we got to D. We didn't pick A because ulcerative colitis, who is reporting having bloody diarrhea, that is a symptom of the disease. Don't pick it. It's a physiological need. We didn't pick B because lung cancer, who is reporting expiratory rust-colored sputum, that is a symptom of the disease. That is also a physiological need. Don't pick it. So now we have a choice between C and D. Now C is dealing with pain and D is dealing with pain. 
However, C is vague. It just says reporting flank pain. It doesn't say how much pain. It doesn't, it doesn't go into that kind of detail. But D gives us a level and a scale. So pick pain after physiological needs and when it gives us a level and a scale. So the last point I want to make is you want to choose the pain answer when there is pain and a negative symptom. Let's look at this question. The nurse has received change of shift report about the following clients. Which would be a priority to follow up? A a 47-year-old client who just had a thyroidectomy one day post-op and is reporting the dressing feels tight. B. A 52-year-old client who had a total knee replacement two days ago and is reporting pain in the affected knee after physical therapy. C. A 48-year-old client who had gallbladder removal surgery and is reporting a pain level of 7 on a scale of 0 to 10, or D, a client with a pleural effusion who had a thoracentesis 30 minutes ago and complains of soreness at the needle site. With A, they are reporting that the dressing feels tight, so that is a problem. The answer is A, because there is a negative symptom going on here. So you want to pick pain if they have pain and a symptom. All right. We don't pick B, because the 52-year-old client had uh, is reporting pain in the affected knee. So it doesn't give us a level. It doesn't give us a scale, and it is a symptom of a total knee replacement surgery, right? We don't pick C because even though we have a level and a scale, with A, there is a problem. The dressing feels tight. It's a physiological need. Physiological needs get picked before the level and the scale. The dressing feeling tight is pain and the symptom is that we need to check that dressing. And D, a client with a pleural effusion who had a thoracentesis 30 minutes ago and complains of soreness at the site. Oh, I said that. That is a symptom of the, of the, um, the surgery, right? So the answer is A. Do you need tutoring and you're taking your state board soon? Call today at 856-777-0840. Or you can visit my website at www.caringforyou.net. Or you can email me at info at caringforyou.net. Or international students can contact me on the WhatsApp at 856-777-0840. Thank you for viewing and God bless you in your endeavors.